duty instead of ugliness, and reason rather than blind faith or irrationality. We believe in some, in the fullest realization and the best and noblest that we are capable of as human beings. And I know that I was watching uh, Alan Greenspan this morning on television, his new book. Um, Anne Rand called him The Undertaker. That was her <laughs> word of endearment about him. <laughs> and she was against altruism. I mean, she was a critic of the Soviet system, and she believed in complete individualism, and she thought everyone was selfish. And although I believe in the free market with regulations, nonetheless, I believe that not everybody is selfish, and that altruism is very deep in the human heart, and we need to cultivate that as humanists. Okay. So, ah, yes, that's my summa bonum. Now, redefine happiness, exuberance. We live in affluent societies such as this great city of Toronto and this great country of, of uh, Canada. And what is, what is the purpose of life? I call it the lust for living. The necessity... <laughs> I can't read my own stuff on the side here. The, the intensity of living, ebullient, julian, throbbing, and pulsating, billowing, <laughs> bursting at the seams, overflowing with energy, bubbling, effervescent, buoyant, fertile, fruitful, delirious, joyful, exultant, vivacious. Peak experiences, romantic love. George Bernard Shaw said, it's too bad it's wasted on the young. <laughs> Ecstasy, orgasm, Vivaldi's Four Seasons, Beethoven's Ninth, ninth Bella Bartok. Rainbows, roller coasters, sunrise and sunset, circus clowns and fudge sundays, French gourmet dinner, Whitman's leaves of grass, rainforest, cherry blossoms, the garden of evil. Sorry. <laughs> I was reading the next one. Seventy two virgins. Someone in New York says, you know, that was a mistake. Somewhat a, a suicide bomber kills a lot of people, goes to heaven. And he meets George Washington and Thomas Jefferson. He says, where are the two virgins? And the God replies, they were Virginians. <laughs> <laughs> Harrows, youthful warriors, spring growth, puppies and kittens. Life is wonderful. And we ought to recognize that fact. And humanism is the willingness to develop the goodness of living, you see in spite of all the problems that we have. Okay, now in conclusion. Well, uh, uh, I'll leave that. Go on to the next one. We've, we've, we've led the battle for civil liberties, for euthanasia, for uh, same-sex uh, sexuality, for the right of a person to choose his or her own life. Okay. But as I said, we live now, is it upside down or downside up? When you go to Australia, they tell us that they're upside and we're downside. Okay, we live in one world, one planet, a blue-green dot as seen from afar, as Carl Sagan said. We need a new commitment to humanity as a whole. The first underlying principle of planetary humanism is the need to respect the dignity and worth of all persons in the world community aside from their political, ethnic, racial, religious, or gender background. We need to act so as to mitigate human suffering and decrease the sum of human happiness wherever it is possible to do so. Okay. And we need a new planetary bill of rights. This has been outlined in Humanist Manifesto 2000, which was published in 1999 in Frank Cry and been translated into 19 in 19 languages, and lays out an agenda for the future of humankind. What I particularly find offensive in the foreign policy of my beloved United States of America 
is the fact that they've abandoned the ideals that we had after World War II, that we would develop principles of collective security, that we would develop new institutions to guard against war, to protect the environment, that we develop a world court to guarantee human rights everywhere. And they've abandoned and abrogated treaties. And they've abandoned the Bill of Rights. We should strive to end poverty and malnutrition and to provide adequate health and shelter for people everywhere on the planet. We should strive to provide economic and adequate income, not only for people within our country, but everywhere, so far as we can. Every person should be protected from unnecessary injury, danger, and human rights, and individuals should have the right to education. And so, I think you only have one or two. No, next one, please. Next one. Yes. What we've discovered from anthropology and genetics, population, no, no way around. That's from Australia. So, So, as far as we can tell, the human species immigrated from Africa into Europe, across uh, into uh, Australia, over the Bering Sea, but it was frozen, into Canada, and these were Mongolians and Chinese, down through North and South America, and were truly part of one human species, and racial differences do not mean anything. They're isolated breeding pockets for a period of time. The American Christian nationalists or neoconservative nationalists maintain that America, the United States, was founded by the descendants of the Mayflower who came over to Plymouth Rock, which we celebrated yesterday or day before in Thanksgiving. The first Americans were Chinese. Remember that. The first Americans were Mongolians. The first Canadians were Mongolians. They were not English or French or Spanish <laughs> or Dutch. They came here, and when we took a cruise, the, the, free, the Center for Brian has a cruise over here, cruise to Alaska and to Canada to see the melting glaciers, I was so struck by the, the features of the people, the Eskimo Indian in this part of the country, to show the relationship to those from Asia. Canada is a land open to immigration. We all come from somewhere else. And the United States also is a product of immigration. We are multicultural products of this. And now, this is the epoch in which we need to recognize that we're all citizens of the planet, that we have an obligation and duty to preserve our abode against those who would destroy it. Yes, a blue-green dot uh, seen from afar. And that we have an obligation to our fellow humans on this planet, no matter where they live. That seems to me to be an agenda for the humanism of the future. We can find new ground, new moral principles, 